Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. Just saw Civil War. It's a nice sunny day. I've got the windows rolled down. We might have some wind, so bear with me. Um, what if you actually had a bear with you, like a real live bear, and you said bear with me? Uh, okay, Civil War, Kirsten Dunst, a bunch of other actors, some familiar faces. Uh, good movie, worth seeing. Probably give it four and a quarter out of five. Should you go see it? I think you should. Uh, I, I, I would say across the board, people can see this movie. Uh, you know, it's an important film. It's timely. It's about the U.S. going to war with itself in modern times in kind of an alternate future, well, or even alternate present. And if you've been following things for a while, you might have seen that Texas, every once in a while, you'll hear a hiccup of information that Texas is wanting to secede from the Union. And guess what, folks? These things happen. Would these birds shut the fuck up? God, we're seagulls. Blah. Who gives a fuck? Anyway, uh, every, every once in a while you hear about Texas wanting to secede, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, a few other states like Florida that I'm in from time to time seem like they might jump on that party wagon. And you have things like the border and abortion and all these uh, topical topics that divide people and are divisive and cause Twitter hashtags, OMG, and all these things. Could this be our future? Well, if you had told some asshole 15 years ago that the movie Idiocracy would seem like a documentary <clears throat> in 15 years, they probably would have slapped you silly and called you a funny guy. But now, that wouldn't seem so unusual. As a matter of fact, during the pandemic era, I guess 2020, 2021, I finally got around to watching the comedy Idiocracy. Had never seen it before. Actually paid real live money on Amazon Prime to watch it. Three or four bucks, whatever it was. And I didn't, I didn't really laugh a whole lot. Because by the time I got around to seeing it, it wasn't a comedy it was a haunting reminder of things that have come to be. So, with a film like this, hopefully, no fate but the fate we make, John Connor, Terminator 2, 1991. Hopefully, uh, we will avoid the shenanigans, the desperation, the death that we see our characters go through in this film. It's, in some ways, shall I say, a road trip movie. We have a band of four uh, war journalists, one writer, uh, two photographers, and a young, a young girl photographer, who of course, the older male photographer was looking to fornicate with. Uh, Kirsten Dunst is kind of the emotional center, the gravitas of the film. Her character, Lee who was named after some famous photographer or has the same name, I guess, as some real live famous female war photographer, if that was a true thing, which I... Sorry, I don't know my war photography information like the back of my hand. Which side is the back? Is this the back of your hand? Just because this is the palm? So how do people know the back of their hand? I mean, you don't sit there and look at it. So, anyway, I like the movie. It's one of those movies where... It's not terribly enjoyable to watch because, oh my God, this could happen. I mean, that's the point of this type of affair. This type of movie is to basically warn us into being kindler and gentler. Is it kinder or kindler? I think it's kindler. Uh, trying to warn us that we should not let our differences divide us. We should uh, allow our similarities to heal us. Heal our nation, oh Lord. So that's it. It's a message movie, but uh, we do get to meet these war reporters, which is pretty interesting. Their minds and how their emotions work, like they're kind of addicted to the noise, so to speak. And you think about it, if you do think about it, real life war journalists are probably not, do di probably not too different from the people in this film. Uh, what an interesting profession, really. Because if you think about all the atrocities we've seen in war, 
with photography, with video. Someone's taking those pictures, someone's taking that video, and they're pretty close to the action, right? So, you know, I suppose, or I guess, or whatever, that war journalists, press, is supposed to have clemency in these times of conflict. Uh, the bad guys or the good guys are not supposed to shoot the press. They're supposed to be off limits, but we know that's not always the case now, do we? So obviously, uh, it's a job. If you think back five years ago, the WWE was doing their dirty blood money business uh, with the Saudi Arabian Sports Authority off the heels of a gentleman, uh, United States citizen press reporter who was very critical of the Saudi Arabian government because he was born, I believe, in Saudi Arabia, was very critical, and he was murdered. So... The WWE and other companies had a lot of sh sh shit <coughs> at the time, a lot of slack because they had so much money invested over there and or a lot of their money, the Saudi Arabians, was invested in these U.S. companies, including WWE and other companies. And uh, some companies left out of, uh, prob not probably not out of moral obligations, but just feeling that that was the best move to do money-wise. The WWE remained... UFC at the time, before they were part of the same TKO deal, I believe the UFC left Saudi Arabia, but they'll probably be back, you know. So, what can you say? I mean, basically, you wake up in the morning, you just want to do your daily thing, you want to go to the Dollar Tree, buy some stuff. Now, if you sat there and contemplated all the children working in all the factories for substandard wage, or even the adults working in some of these factories so you can buy your $1.25 uh, fucking blow-up doll or whatever the fuck you're buying, you may not be able to live with yourself if you knew where all the ingredients of your lifestyle, all the things you frivolously buy, if you knew the footprints or the fingerprints of these items, you may not be able to be consciousable about it. And we all struggle with that, or at least some of us do. Uh, but then you say, gee whiz, uh, I'd rather just go to the movie and watch it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, what can I tell you? I mean, uh, at this point, I mean, I, I had a, a person uh, once upon a time was always preaching to me. Guy was about 20 years older than me, always preaching to me about all these goddamn things, trying to inspire me to go out and take on the world. And finally, I just fucking said, hey, look. Maybe, you know, the way that you're talking uh, and the way that I believe already, maybe we as a society are so far off the tracks, it doesn't even matter what I do or what you do. We're, we're so far fucking gone that you just might as well enjoy the last ride. You know what I mean? And that shut the fucker up for a while, for five minutes. Because it's true. I mean, if you think about all the goddamn environmental issues, the conflicts, the disease, okay the international terror, the school shootings, all these things that are horrible. Uh, if you and I are trying to solve all these things, we would never fucking leave the house. We would hashtag ourselves into oblivion, baby. We would protest until there was nothing left to protest. We'd have to protest the protests, okay? So at some point, you just say, hey, look, I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round, okay? Uh, you know, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm going to enjoy my life, and if the world wants to shit in its own bed, then let it shit in its own bed. I have to enjoy myself and go to Disney World once in a fucking while. You know what I mean? I can't cure all the problems. You serve me this buffet of bullshit. I'm just picking out the bones of the things I don't want to eat, okay? So there you fucking have it, folks. So, good movie. I, you know, like I said, it's hard to say I enjoyed it. It was compelling. Uh, it's a warning sign. There's a nice quote in this movie where the Kirsten Dunst, I always like saying her name right because I feel very intelligent when I say Kirsten instead of Kristen. I say Kirsten. I mean, what the hell happened with that name? Was there some person who was dyslexic? They were trying to name their child Kristen, and they fucked up on the birth certificate and wrote Kirsten? So now we have this whole new name we have to deal with that's hard to pronounce. Kirsten Dunst, playing this reporter Lee, she goes into the bathtub. No, you do not see nudity. 
you only see the top of her neck and her head and her contemplative forehead. And she's having these flashbacks to all these horrible situations she's been in as a war, war journalist, seeing people shot, seeing a man get put on fire, all these horrible things that uh, revoke her memories and torture her. And um, she says something, uh, God, what does she say? She says something to the younger journalist, the 23 year old that she's passing the baton to. Uh, God, what the fuck was it that she said? Oh, she said, every time I would send a photograph or a video back home, I thought I was sending a warning. Don't let this happen here. Then she looks around to all the war in the United States and she says, and here we are. So fine, folks, when you're sitting there on your YouTube, you're sitting there with your hashtags, uh, you're trying to solve all the world's problems on social media with an Instagram post that you copied and pasted from some other idiot. Just remember Lee's words and just, you know, think about the fact that here in the good old USA or whatever country you're sitting in comfortably, if you are comfortable, uh, you can enjoy your freedom, more or less. You can enjoy your privacy, more or less. You can enjoy your sanctity, your safety, more or less. And then you think about the poor people, not, 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 not to say poor people, but the people who are in horrible situations in different aspects of the world. You have these uh, thousand-year wars, these conflicts that I don't understand, that you don't understand. We think we do, but we don't, okay? You have these people suffering... Uh, these these genocides, these all these horrible things, and uh, what can you do about it? I mean, you know, I guess if there if everyone was an asshole like me and just went to the movies and, you know, just said what the fuck, then nothing would get improved. So thankfully, there are people that are doing more than I am. Okay, so thank you, whoever you are, probably a lot of folks, but at least I'm aware of it. At least I'm aware of my own signif insignificance. I'm just here to entertain you, fine folks. So I'm just doing my part. Uh, what else? I don't know. It's one of those movies where, yes, it's not going to give you a, a, you know, you're not going to feel light as a feather coming out of this thing. Um, real situations, and quite honestly, we're not that far removed from the things happening in this film. And if you really think about it, the actual civil war, the war between the states, as those in the South might say, the war of northern aggression, um... We're not that far removed from that. Less than, uh, not, let's see, 1860 to 1864. Was that correct? And what is it now? 2024, so 150 years ago. That's not that long. Uh, you know, so what can you do? So, I like the movie. I mean, I respect the movie. Yes, it's it's for what it is, and I think there's been a few movies like this before. Is this what you would call a dystopian film? Uh, you know, like a shitty world future? But I think a lot of times movies like that are more like sci-fi oriented, like Blade Runner and so forth. I just rolled up my windows because I was, I got sandwiched. There's a couple of people on my left talking. There's some person that just parked on my right. So now I have to roll up the windows and be uncomfortable for a moment. Um, it's, you know what the worst thing is? I mean, it's not the worst thing. There's things that are worse. But one thing that I don't like is when you park your car and you're about to, you're collecting your items, you're getting your game face on for whatever adventure, and you just want to park and get up and go. And then someone like on your uh, left parks and they have like the fucking SUV or the family caravan. And then they get out and they've got the fucking kid in the back seat and the kitty seat. And or they've got several children or an elderly person. And it's like you have to sit there and wait for like, because you can't be the asshole. It's like, hey hold, on, hey, hold on, family. You wait for me. I'm going to get my stuff out of the car. You have to wait for them now. And it's always longer than it should be. It's, it's always some rigmarole. Now, luckily, I'm not in that situation right now. But I was just thinking about it, the inconveniences I go through. Okay, folks. So, yes, go see Civil War. I saw in Dolby Digital, wonderful. 
you're thinking, how can we get in touch with this guy, Mike Messier? How can we buy his books? How can we stand him on social? How can we buy his artwork? Go to MikeMessier.com. MikeMessier.com. Scroll to the bottom and do something.